Hello, fictional. Welcome to the What If Issei. Today we are gonna see, What If Issei was the Hidden Dragon Leader. Part 4. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Miki Haidu was well aware that her son was engaging in an incredible battle, and she was also aware of what it meant for him and the two girls that had stayed in her home the last few days. I wonder if everything's okay, Miki muttered as she began to prepare a hearty dinner for the three supernatural warriors, knowing they'd need it. She got her answer when she sensed four presences return to the house, which meant her son had used his clones to bring them back. While Irina and Issei were training outside, Irina's father taught her and her husband how to send supernatural power to aid them, in case somebody on the more dangerous side of the world came calling, something's happened and it's not good. Mickey mumbled. Up in Issei's room, a solemn Issei held Irina in his arms as she wailed because of Kakabiel's words. The fact that God was dead alone wasn't the problem, but it was the fact that her father no doubt knew that and hid it from her. It was the fact that the most important person in her life didn't trust her enough with the truth. I'm so sorry Irina. I had no idea this would happen. Issei said solemnly as Irina cried onto his outfit. He knew his childhood friend was in pain and there was nothing he could do. You're lying. You must have known since you didn't want us to go to the battle. Irina yelled out in frustration, but that quickly faded when Irina was silenced by a forcible kiss on the lips from the clone. Irina I would never hide something like that from you. I care about you as much as I care about any of the girls I'm with right now. You are that precious to me Irina. Issei confessed. It was a clone, but the real Issei wouldn't have disagreed with the words. Irina was stunned by the clone's confession, then prove it Issei. Fuck me until the pain goes away. Make me forget about it all Irina said angrily. As much as I want to I can't do that Irina. The only person who should do that is the real me. I'm sure when he gets back from the battle he'll fuck you for as long as you want and as hard as you want, but right now he wants you to calm down so you can greet him with a smile. The clone Issei smiled. Irina pouted because that was very much Issei. He couldn't take advantage of the situation even if he wanted to. Fine but until he gets back, I'm not leaving your arms. Irina relented. The Issei smiled and in moments the pair was cuddling like normal. Over with Zenovia the young woman was in pain and much like with Irina, the clone simply stayed with the girl and held her closely until she calmed down. The clone didn't mind the crying he just knew that both girls were crushed by the news. He also knew that both girls would never forget what Issei did for them in their time of need. Who Academy. During the battle with Riser, Riaz acknowledged that Issei was powerful. However, the power he showed when he trounced the Phoenix Air paled in comparison to the monster strength he was showing now. Unreal Rias gasped as she watched the young man stare down the mighty Kakabiel and show an aura that far surpassed what he showed that infamous night. What an incredible amount of power. You might be the strongest red dragon emperor in some time Kakabiel smiled as he stood ready for battle. I don't care about any of that. All I care about is stopping you right now, Kakabiel is say deadpan before vanishing in an impressive show of speed that shocked Rias, but not the experienced Kakabiel. The cadre easily blocked the roundhouse kick is say aimed at him from behind. If you're going to stop me you need to do much better boy. That much should be obvious. Kakabiel cackled knowing that the attack he just used was enough to seriously damage most normal fighters. Iride Issei frowned before moving back to gain some distance from the cadre. The attack he just used had a fair bit of power, but Kakabiel simply brushed it off. Kakabiel was certainly a different monster when compared to the likes of Riser. Boost X10. That's more like it Kakabiel smirked before charging Issei again. But grief Issei shrugged before attacking once again in earnest. A stunned Riaz watched as Issei and Kakabiel exchanged a series of punches and kicks, but instead of being pushed back Issei was holding firm giving as good as he got. After around three minutes the exchange ended and the pair stopped to seemingly relax for a little bit. How in the world is he so powerful? Riaz said in disbelief. Sure she knew Issei was powerful, but he was fighting a cadre evenly. I don't know but you. Issei seems to have secret after secret. Yumi admitted. The clone that comforted her was gone, but it did his job. I see Rias replied with relief in her voice due to her night's recovery. It was at that moment that the duo stopped fighting briefly. Should we help him Carlam and suggested aware that in the long run, Issei could not stand up to a fallen angel cadre. Issei overheard the comment from Carlaman, and as pleased as he was with it, he had to stop them before this really got annoying. I wouldn't do that Carlaman. Kakabiel is taking it easy on me right now since his objective is finished. If you get involved he might take this seriously and then we're in trouble. Issei smiled causing Kakabiel to look at Issei with an amused smile. What makes you think I'm finished with my objective boy and for that matter what makes you think you know what my objective was? Kakabiel asked with intrigue. Issei looked at the man with an almost bored expression and explained his reasoning, you don't need Valper to kill Rias. Hell at your full power you could destroy the entire town with a single spear. The greatest proof of all that you didn't need Valper was the fact that you killed him yourself. 
The Kabyle chuckled at Issei's ruthless logic, you're correct boy, but what makes you think my objective is complete? Kakabiel sneered. Issei knew Kakabiel was baiting him, but decided not to play along, call it dragonic instincts. Issei replied with a smile. The Kabyle chuckled since he wasn't taking the bait, very well, let's continue the battle. Kakabiel chuckled unfurling his wings and taking to the sky ready for another round of fights. Very well. Issei smiled unfurling the red wings from his balance breaker and taking to the sky himself. Boost x10, wonderful. You will make a fine red dragon emperor someday. Kakabiel said happily in awe of the young man's power and his ability with the boosted gear. I already am Issei replied with a vicious smile before putting his hands up. Dragon shot Issei or firing a powerful burst at the cadre. That's all you've got Kakabiel smirked easily blocking the attack, but it was merely a distraction. Not at all Issei smiled having used the original attack as a distraction to axe kick him from above. This attack hit, sending the cadre towards the ground or at least it would have had Kakabiel not easily recovered. You're good brat. Kakabiel smiled before flying back towards Issei. Thanks Issei replied before charging Kakabiel again and the clash resumed in midair this time. This is unreal. How can he be this strong? Ria's thought to herself as the pair clashed midair. It was obvious that Issei was stronger than she was by a large margin, and she wondered how the young man managed to condense all of his incredible might. Is this the same Issei that fought Riser Carloman thought to herself? If her old master only knew what a monster his opponent really was and how fortunate he got to only get a light beating. I don't know but his aura is amazing Akeno preened noticing the sheer power he was exuding. Internally she was disappointed that Issei was only after Yumi, but she also doubted if she could survive a man like that herself. While Lakeno Riaz and Carloman were focused on the level of strength that Issei was using, Yumi was focused on why he was using so much power. Is all of this because of her Yumi mumbled. She knew that his childhood friend was his treasure, and Yumi couldn't help but curse internally, wondering if the only reason he was fighting this hard was because of her reaction to the news of God's death. The worst part was that there was a very real chance that she would be seeing them again. Asia simply healed a devil, and she lost everything, which meant learning about God's death would certainly lead to her getting kicked out. What was that Yumi Riaz asked overhearing her knight's musing? Nothing. Yumi quickly replied wanting to make sure that her concern stayed her concern. The smiling Issei continued to exchange punches and kicks, knowing that it was his best chance of winning, since Kai attacks wouldn't work due to the man's speed and strength. This has been an incredible battle Kakabiel. Issei smiled as he nailed the cadre in the stomach with a surprising punch. Just as he was about to move to finish the battle a burst of light flashed from above, breaking the barrier that the Citri team had so effortlessly created and causing everyone to jump back, including a very annoyed to say. What's going on Ria's wondered as she tried to focus on who or what had interrupted them. We've got company Issei groaned in annoyance well aware of the source. The group looked on as a single figure appeared in wide armor not unlike Issei's. I hate to interrupt your fun Issei, but I'm going to have to take it from here. A distinctly female voice said smugly. I should have known you'd show up sooner or later Valerie. Issei groaned in annoyance before dispelling his armor. The battle was officially over and it annoyed him to no end. Oh don't pout. I'm doing you a favor after all. The voice replied before turning towards the winded but hardly tired cadre. So Koki are we going to do this the easy way or the hard way? I get it brat. Let's go Kakabiel growled knowing his fun had come to an end. He admittedly enjoyed himself and he got what he wanted so he could leave with a smile. Hold on a minute. Ria said angrily realizing that the person who had done so much damage was about to leave. What do you want Red? The now named Valerie groaned in annoyance. The name is Ria's Gremory and I demand to know who you are and why you're here. Ria's insisted. Drop it Ria's Issei insisted himself not wanting this to become a headache. Issei, think about everything Kakabiel's done. How can you just let him get away like this? Ria's exclaimed. Trust me he's not getting away with anything. Issei deadpanned. Can we just get going already? Listening to the Gremory heiress's foolish babbling is getting annoying. Kakabiel groaned. What was that Ria said angrily. Sure sure Valerie dismissed and the pair flew into the sky. For better or worse the battle was over. Ria's turned towards the annoyed Issei with a mix of relief at the end of the battle and concern over what happens next. Well I guess it's all over. Ria said awkwardly unsure of what else to say. Issei looked at the Gremory heiress with a blank stare before deciding to just let it be, yes it is. I'll bring the Shattered Blades back to Arena and Zenobia, and I'm sure they'll make their way back to England. I trust you can handle the cleanup here. Issei said plainly. Yes we can. Ria's replied. More and more Ria's regretted not being able to turn Issei into her servant, but a part of her wondered if she could have even when she first made her move. But Issei replied as he went over to the destroyed fragments and mentally cursed because he realized that Freed was gone. Most likely he escaped in the confusion, but he doubted the man would be an issue. His focus was more on what to do about Arena and Zenobia. Freed Selzin was not a happy man right now. 
His blade was gone and his means of escape was gone as well. When Valper was killed he used the opening to flee and was lucky that he found a soft spot in the barrier to escape from the devils casting it. He found himself in the abandoned church where he once worked for the fallen angels and he knew he was in trouble. Fucking fallen angels. I should have learned my lesson after the first time. Freed cursed realizing that he was in trouble. The devils would realize he was gone soon enough and there was no way he could escape. Well how about you try working with a devil this time? A male voice cackled in the shadows of the church. Who are you? Freed cursed. Somebody who wants your services Freed sells in the boy said from the shadows walking closer but never revealing himself. Why should I work with a shitty devil? Freed scowled. Because I can provide you with the power you need to get your revenge and beautiful women that you can use to sate your lust all the time. The voice cackled. Freed was very intrigued by the offer, but there was always a catch with something like this, oh come on what's the catch? There's always a catch with you guys. No catch at all. All I ask is that you do what I say when the time comes the voice replied calmly. Freed realized that this was as good as it got and he had nothing to lose, deal. So can you at least tell me who I'm working with? Freed wondered. The figure walked out of the shadows revealing a young man with black hair and gold eyes wearing some expensive clothes. Diodora Astareth at your service the now revealed young man said happily. Well Diodora, I guess I just made a deal with the devil. Freed smiled happily aware that this opportunity would be a bit different from his last two. Yes, yes you did Diodora replied with a vicious grin of his own, and the pair soon left via magic circle. Now back at his home, Issei Haidu would have liked to just curl up in bed and sleep after the intense battle. He hadn't used his full power in a very long time, and frankly he was exhausted. However he was willing himself awake because he knew that he had to comfort the two church girls who had suffered greatly. Here we go Issei groaned as he made his way up the stairs. Even though his didn't get his clone's memories he suspected Irina and Zenovia were both in different rooms. Because of that it would be troublesome for him to decide which one to speak to first. Fortunately for him, his clones were just as skilled at sensing power as he was so they would have known what happened pretty quickly. Sure enough, one of his clones was waiting for him in front of the stairs. They're both in the guest room boss the clone smiled before dispelling since his task was done. Do you know what you're going to say? Drake questioned aware that Issei made a few mistakes this night. No, but that's rarely stopped me before Issei chuckled as he walked into the room, but when he did he was met with a sight he admittedly didn't expect. Irina and Zenovia were lying on the bed in just underwear. Irina was in a pure white bra and panty set that seemed to glow in the room, and Zenovia was wearing a pure red one. Even though their cheeks were puffy from all the crying they no doubt did in the arms of his clones, the two girls still looked absolutely amazing. You like Issei? Irina said happily. Yes I do but I must confess I didn't expect this. Issei admitted. Despite what happened, I'm heading back to the church tomorrow and there's no telling what will happen. I don't want the last memory I shared with my childhood friend to be of him drugging me. Irina frowned rather cutely. I just want to engage in intercourse and you promised we would do so. Zenobia added. Very well girls Issei said happily as he took off his clothes and approached the bed. Lemon start. Issei Haidu was definitely going to enjoy both of the church girls, but the question was which one would be first, hey Issei, why don't you start with Zenovia, since she hasn't gotten a chance with you yet. Irina suggested making his life slightly easier. Wearing only his boxers, Issei approached Zenovia who was on the right side of the bed and smiled, I'm surprised you're allowing her to go first. Issei chuckled as he slid onto the bed and towards the blue net. I owe her one because of the shower. Irina said with a slight blush, all but confirming that she interrupted them on purpose. Issei could only shrug as he cupped Zenovia's face, looks like we won't get interrupted this time. Issei smiled. Zenovia cupped back and smiled, yes, and this time there's nothing making you feel guilty either. Zenovia smiled as she leaned up and pressed her lips against Issei's for her first kiss. Issei simply held the kiss for a little bit before he decided to get greedy and slide his tongue into Zenovia's. The blue net quickly accepted and the clash of tongues began. Wow Irina gasped as she watched the pair make out and she was reminded of her first kiss with Issei many years ago. The thought had her more than turned on but had to watch for a minute until Zenovia pulled away for air. I definitely felt something that time. Zenovia smiled. Good because you're about to feel a lot more. Issei smiled as he towered over her body ready to tease her even more. Issei kissed Zenovia on the cheek before peppering her upper body with kisses as she squirmed underneath her. So good. Zenovia moaned enjoying the feel of Issei's lips against her body. As this was happening Irina was slowly beginning to stir. Issei was about to arrive at Zenovia's breasts before he was interrupted. Issei what about me? Irina asked with lust in her voice. This was different from when he took her virginity only a few nights ago. Issei turned towards his childhood friend with a grin on his face and said, just play with yourself for a little bit. 
You promise not to interrupt. All right, Irina said bashfully as she undid her bra and tossed it to the side, exposing her impressive breasts. Turning back towards Zenobia, Issei couldn't help but smile. Now where were we? Issei smiled looking right at her breasts. Despite the pleasure coursing through her body, Zenobia leaned up and undid her own bra, knowing that Irina would want a more vivid image to tease herself with. You were about to play with my breasts. Zenobia smiled. Issei smiled at Zenobia's teasing and understood what she wanted, yes I was. Issei smiled taking his hand and groping the young woman's right breast. Ngh Zenobia moaned not used to Issei's firm hands against her breasts. She had played with herself a little bit, but this was different. You have such soft breasts Zenobia. You and Rena may be the same size, but your breasts are softer. Issei teased remembering the feel of his childhood friend compared to himself. Not cool Issei. Irina moaned as she teased her own breasts. So good Zenobia moaned as Issei teased her nipples. Oh we're just getting started Issei said with a vicious grin on his face, as he leaned in and clamped his tongue on Zenobia's left nipple. Hiya. Zenobia moaned not expecting him to go that far so soon. You're so lucky Zenobia Arena pouted as Issei teased Zenobia's left nipple with his tongue, while his hand snaked down towards her snatch. Oh Zenobia and I are just getting started. Issei smiled as his right hand arrived at the brunette snatch, and with no effort at all snuck underneath the small fabric in order to cup her entrance, finding that she was surprisingly wet. Issei please take off my panties. Zenobia moaned not wanting the pair to get soaked. Of course Issei replied sliding the red piece of fabric off of Zenobia's shapely legs and exposing her pussy to Issei at last. Issei can you do mine too? Irina moaned her own hands teasing her breasts as she spread her legs so Issei could remove the fabric. Such a needy girl. Issei smirked as he moved to slide his own childhood friend's panties off and her soaked snatch was revealed. Issei couldn't help but laugh since the two girls were extremely eager to get going. It was hard to believe they were crying their eyes off barely 30 minutes ago. I'm only this needy because of you. Now give us a memory that will make us smile. Irina said greedily much to Issei's amusement. Issei wanted to play around a little more, but he was getting horny. Very well Issei smiled as he got off the bed for a second in order to take off his boxers. Once his massive member was revealed the two church girls looked at each other and nodded. That monster would tear Zenobia in half if she took it as she was, and due to their first time together, Irina was somewhat used to Issei's length. Zenobia moved to the back of the bed opening up her legs, so there was a small opening, and Irina went in between with her rear elevated, so Issei could have some more fun. It was the perfect way for Irina to get her Issei time and ensure that Zenobia wasn't split apart. Come on Issei. You know what to do. Irina looked back seeing the hungry gaze of her childhood friend. Yes, yes I do. Issei smiled. Irina was clearly trying to protect Zenobia and who was Issei to deny her. Moving to the bed Issei got on his knees and lined his length up with Irina's entrance before sliding it in at a surprisingly slow speed. Yes. Irina roared feeling Issei inside her again. With the clone she did all her crying and now she was going to scream in pleasure. Come on now Irina. Do your part. Zenobia pouted slightly. Thought Irina said bashfully as she leaned into her partner's snatch and began licking in order to prepare her for Issei. Ah, that's better. Zenobia moaned happily glad her lower half was being teased. You two seem used to this. Issei smirked as he began moving inside Arena. We had a little bit of practice. Zenobia moaned as Issei pressed Arena further into her body. I see Issei smiled picking up his speed turned on by the thoughts of Arena and Zenobia teasing each other. Issei take it easy Arena mumbled from inside Zenobia's snatch. No Issei keep going. Zenobia moaned enjoying how Irina's moan stimulated her entrance. I'll keep going Issei smiled using the quicker speed to please the blue-haired girl. Issei hold on I can't take it. Irina moaned trying to keep up her work on Zenobia's snatch, but finding the task to be more difficult the more they kept going. MHMM so good. Zenobia moaned enjoying the way Irina moaned inside her pussy. The smiling Issei couldn't help but enjoy the moment and he noticed Zenobia's nipples were getting rock hard due to the stimulation. Hey Zenobia, lean up for me. Issei instructed figuring the brunette would know what he was after. Right Zenobia smiled leaning up so her breasts were above Irina's body giving Issei full access. At a girl Issei smiled and he leaned in to lick her nipples more pushing deeper into Irina. Yeah so good. Zenobia moaned and a helpless Irina was forced to leave her partner's snatch or she would be in trouble. Jeez. You guys are too much. Irina groaned having to gasp for air. Sorry Irina. Issei smiled. Dirk Arena pouted before resuming her work with Issei moving inside her at a slower pace. Five more minutes of the new positin and the girls had reached their limit. Issei I'm about to coom. Zenobia moaned. So am I Issei smiled causing Arena to panic since she wasn't quite there yet. Hold on Issei, I'm not ahhhhh Arena moaned as Issei slammed his load into her bringing about her own orgasm and causing her to fall into her partner's snatch just as she came. Yes. Zenobia moaned spraying her juices into Arena's mouth. 
I hate you both Irina pouted. Issei pulled out of Irina's snatch with his members still rock hard and ready for more. Do you mind cleaning me up Irina? I want Zenobia to get a fresh start. Issei smirked presenting his member for a clean up blowjob. Okay Irina said with a blush as she quickly cleaned Issei's member of their combined juices before moving to the side in order to allow Zenobia her own moment. Come on Issei let me have it, Zenobia smiled getting into the same position as Irina before. It just seemed right this way for her. Alright Zenobia. How about I make you come a few times before you go, Issei joked lining up his entrance with Zenobia's snatch, causing the two girls to look at him sideways at the lame pun. Never make that joke again partner. Drake lectured into his head. Yeah yeah Issei smirked before sliding into Zenobia and claiming her virginity for his own. Ah. Zenobia moaned as her virginity was taken at last. His jokes may be terrible, but his dick is amazing. Irina smiled. Yes he's so big and so hard. Zenobia moaned. Well how about I show you what I can do Zenobia. Issei smiled as he grabbed her hips and began moving at breakneck speed. Yes. Yes. So good. Zenobia moaned as Issei hammered her snatch at a fearsome speed. He's letting her have it, Irina moaned as she watched Issei pound her partner into the mattress. Don't worry because I'm coming for you next Irina. I'm gonna send you back to England with a smile on your face and a belly full of coom. Issei said with a savage grin on his face while keeping up the speed. Don't forget me Issei. Ruin me for any other man. Zenobia screamed out in pleasure. It was only a few minutes, but already she was hooked. Got it Issei smiled hammering the blue net snatch as her limit arrived after five other minutes. I'm cooming Zenobia screamed as her juices exploded onto Issei's member. Here we go Zenobia. Issei smiled as his own release arrived as Zenobia's pussy was filled to the brim. Amazing Zenobia moaned and she collapsed onto the bed a smile on her face. Issei pulled out of Zenobia and turned towards his blushing childhood friend. Come here Arena. It's your turn now. Issei said happily knowing his night was just beginning. As she moved towards her childhood friend Arena's body was throbbing with anticipation, if I didn't know better Issei's determined to make sure I never leave his side again, and I'm okay with that. Arena thought to herself as she prepared for the very pleasurable night to come. Lemon end. By the time the fun was over, each girl had a fuck silly look on their faces and four loads in each of their pussies. That was incredible, Zenobia moaned barely able to stay conscious. That's my Issei. I definitely can't say I'm pure anymore. Irina smiled. Why don't you girls get some rest? You've got a long day ahead of you. Issei smiled. Right Irina smiled as she collapsed onto the bed with Zenobia not far behind. Night girls Issei smiled before kissing them on the cheek one last time before grabbing his clothes and leaving the two girls to rest. This was a crazy day for the three of them and Kakabiel's actions were sure to shake the supernatural world to its core. As Issei Haidu sat down to eat with his mother he couldn't help but frown. The good news was that Kakabiel was gone, but the bad news was that before he left, the cadre revealed the death of the biblical god to Irina and Zenobia. Issei was no fool and considering what happened to Asia, the chances of Irina and Zenobia staying with the church was practically zero. So have you talked to old man Tauji? I know you realized something was wrong, Issei asked his mother curious if she had spoken to Irina's father. She would have known something was wrong from having sensed him. He gave her more credit than that. How could I talk to him if I don't know what happened? I can guess something was wrong, but I wouldn't know to talk to her father unless I had specifics, Mickey Haidu countered. Right Issei replied sheepishly before explaining what happened. Needless to say Issei's mother quickly realized what a bad situation it was. Those poor girls Mickey Haidu said solemnly well aware of the troubles that were on the way for the girls. Tell me about it. Issei replied with a look of annoyance. So what are you going to do about it? Mickey Haidu questioned. What's that supposed to mean? Issei replied with a raised eyebrow. You and I both know you have connections that could help the girls in various ways. Are you going to use them? Mickey Haidu wondered. Issei smiled since he did have such connections and knew exactly which ones to push, yes. Yes I am. Issei replied happily. Rhea's Gremory was not a happy girl as she sat in her office Sunday night. The news of God's death shook her despite being a devil, but it was the overwhelming power of Issei Haidu that was even more troublesome. Issei was an incredible ally, but if he ever turned against her it would be a nightmare. The fact he was able to control Yumi so perfectly was dangerous and there was no telling the hold he had on Carloman, what do I do? Rhea's curse to herself. She was broken from her musing by a magic circle appearing in her office and based on the symbols, the owner was the man she was just thinking about. Hello there Rhea's. Is now a bad time? Issei smiled aware it was late at night with school the next day. Not at all. I was just finishing some paperwork before I went to sleep. What brings you here so late at night? Rhea's wondered curiously. I wanted to call in that favor I owe you for the riser situation. Issei said calmly, and that got Rhea's attention. 
Riaz crossed her hands on the desk in a surprisingly professional manner before replying, what do you want me to do? I want you to arrange a meeting between me and the people who created the evil pieces. I'm fairly certain they're still alive. Issei explained causing Ria's eyes to sharpen, since that was an odd request. It was just one person and he is alive. Do you mind if I ask why you want this meeting? Ria's questioned. Issei wasn't aware of it, but the man who created the evil pieces was a Mao, and seeing him wasn't a simple task, especially for someone who wasn't a devil. I'm afraid that's a private matter. Issei insisted. And I'm afraid it's not that simple Issei. The man you're looking for is Ajuka Beelzebub, and he happens to be a Mao. If I can't give a very good reason for him to meet you, I doubt even my influence will be enough. Riaz admitted. Issei groaned since it wouldn't be nearly as simple as he hoped. I want to speak to him regarding the evil pieces. Frankly that's all I'm comfortable discussing. Issei admitted. Riaz frowned but realized that he wasn't going to say much else, fine I'll see what I can do. I assume you want it as soon as possible correct? Yes I would. You can have Yumi contact me if you're able to get it done. Issei smiled before leaving via a magic circle before Riaz could respond. This is going to be a long night. Riaz frowned as she went about contacting her brother in order to try and arrange said meeting. Good morning Issei Murayama said happily before shamelessly straddling his waist. Homeroom hadn't started so she could visit Issei without too much trouble. Somebody's in a good mood. Issei smiled wrapping his arms around his kendo club lover, well aware of what she wanted. While Irina was arranging the flight back, Issei sent a message to Murayama to inform her that he'd be returning to the club. Can you blame me? I'm getting my manager back. Murayama smiled as she pressed her lips against Issei's in a heated kiss, much to the jealous fury of the watching perverted duo, who couldn't say anything out of fear of Issei's bad side. The kiss lasted a minute before Murayama pulled away, but right behind her was a smiling Caddis. By turn Caddis said happily as she took Murayama's place, but before she could kiss him, Issei pressed his finger on her lips. It would seem we have to postpone your kiss Caddis. Issei smiled bitterly. Why is that Caddis wondered nervously? Because I have a visitor Issei smiled pointing to the door and Ria's Gremory, who apparently decided to deliver the news he wanted personally. And this wait until later, I haven't been able to spend time with my manager in a week, and I miss him. Caddis pouted. The class rolled their eyes since Caddis and Murayama still had fun with Issei before homeroom during the last week. I have business to discuss with Ria's. I'll make it up to you later Caddis I promise. Issei smiled before kissing her on the cheek. Hein Caddis pouted before reluctantly getting up. Issei walked over to the Gremory Princess with a smile, shall we go Riaz? Of course Riaz replied as the pair made their way to the Orc to discuss their business from a night before. When they arrived at the office, Riaz sat behind the desk and smiled, so what are you going to tell them when you get back, since she'll be very curious why this couldn't wait until later. Riaz wondered curiously. Issei raised his eyebrow slightly but stayed calm, I'll just say that you wanted to discuss Yumi's time with the kendo club and make sure that it doesn't interfere with our activities. Issei smiled. And by activities you mean you having sex with the kendo club. Ria's replied with a blush well aware of just what went on at the club. Yep, but enough about my sex life, I'm guessing you were able to arrange my meeting with Ajuka. Issei questioned. He was honestly shocked it took her only one night. Given what he asked he thought he had at least a day or two. Yes I was. He's on his way here since you wanted this done as soon as possible. I'll give you to the club room to talk Ria smiled before leaving to attend to her own classes. Not even a minute later a magic circle appeared in the middle of the room. That was fast as say chuckled as a single man appeared in the room. The man appeared to be in his early twenties with light blue eyes and green hair that was slicked back. He was wearing a mauve green business suit with purple shirt, but Issei wouldn't comment on how ugly it looked. It's a pleasure to meet you Red Dragon Emperor. I am Ajuka Beelzebub, and I understand you wish to speak with me. Ajuka smiled as he moved to sit at Ria's chair. Yes I do. I want to ask you how you created the evil pieces. Issei revealed much to the shock of the Mao. I see and how much of this has to do with those exorcists that joined your group for the mission with Kakabiel. Ajuka replied with a raised eyebrow. I should have known you'd figure it out easily. You created something as wonderful as the evil pieces alone, which means you are extremely intelligent. Issei smiled bitterly. The reality was that Irina and Zenovia were about to be expelled from the church. Well Zenovia certainly would, but regardless of the outcome for her, Irina would follow because she felt her father betrayed her. When that happened, the girls would return to Kuo and to him, because they have nowhere else to go. His mother was aware of the same thing, which is why she mentioned his contacts. The question was what would they do after that? Ria's needed peerage members, and adding one or both of them was something she would definitely do if given the chance. Issei wouldn't allow that, and he wanted a way to prevent them from becoming devils, even if it meant binding them to him. Yes. 
It's also why I know that you want to ensure that those girls don't become devils by turning them into your servants, which is why you called me. What surprises me is that you're calling me when you should be able to accomplish this yourself, Ajuka grinned rather perversely if Issei was being honest. I'm well aware that I could easily seduce Ria's into staying away from the girls, but I assume that the Grimmery family wanted Ria's to remain pure until she's eventually married to a new suitor. For the record, I have zero interest in that person being me. Issei explained to a pleasantly surprised Ajuka. Truthfully, he could have used the favor to get Rias to stay away from Irina and Zenovia when they return also, but this way he could also help them get stronger in the process. Ajuka could only chuckle at the response since it showed Issei did understand devil politics well for a human, purity was only an issue for Riser, and with him out of the picture, Rias is free to have a fling or two, if she wished Ajuka revealed. What went unsaid was the fact that everyone around Rias was aware she only had eyes for Issei, so the only other suitor possible would be him. Issei raised his eyes at the response, but focused more on the topic at hand, back to the matter at hand. I want to turn the two girls into dragons using a similar concept to the evil pieces. Can you help me? Issei said bluntly. Very well, but in exchange I want you to do something for me. Ajuka wondered. What's that? Issei questioned since this could go plenty of different ways. The three factions will be meeting very soon in order to discuss everything that's happened. I wish for you to attend not as a representative for the devils, but as the Red Dragon Emperor. Issei was slightly surprised by the request, but seeing as it was so simple he didn't mind, very well. Alright. Then as promised I'll tell you about how I created the evil pieces. Ajuka replied with a smile. Issei spent the next hour discussing the finer details of evil pieces with Ajuka. It turned out that the process was a more advanced version of his transfer power. The chess pieces were imbued with the devil in question's power, and the chant allowed the pieces to go into a person's body. In truth it could work for any object, but Ajuka chose chess pieces because chess had a hierarchy already in place that was easy to understand and a set power structure that worked very well for devils. With the knowledge he now possessed, he could make Arena and Zenobia into demi-dragons, and that was exactly what he intended to do. The smiling Issei collapsed onto the bed with a naked Murayama and Caddis next to him. During practice, Issei satisfied the other girls in the club but told Murayama and Caddis to come over tonight. They naturally agreed. I'm beat Issei chuckled as Murayama and Caddis snuggled into his arms. I'm amazed you could still satisfy us after doing the others. Caddis admitted. I'm a bit special, but you knew that already. Issei replied kissing Caddis on the cheek. We know that but it's still amazing. Murayama smiled. Just as he was about to go to sleep his phone rang. Do you have to get it? Caddis pouted since she wanted to enjoy the moment with Issei a little longer. Yes I do. There are very few people who would call me this late at night and if somebody was it would have to be very important. Issei frowned. The very few part was a lie. Only one person would be calling him this late, and he had a fairly good idea of why she was calling. Getting out of bed he grabbed the phone and barely managed to hold back a sigh when Arena's number appeared on the screen. Answering the phone quickly, Issei said hold on a second softly as he moved out of the room. Once he arrived in the guest room he closed the door and used a small spell to ensure nobody heard him before putting his phone back to his ear. Hey there Issei said softly. I take it I called at a bad time? Irina said with a pout. Irina was no fool, and she realized that the only reason Issei hadn't replied instantly was that he was occupied with other girls. What happened? Issei replied quickly dismissing the subject of why he was busy. Irina knew he was deflecting, but gathered herself and began to speak, Zenovia, and I have been reassigned to Kuo on a long-term mission effective immediately. Irina explained. She was basically getting kicked out, but this way the church didn't have to explain why two of its strongest exorcists were gone despite completing their mission. Issei was pleased with the news since it actually saved him a step. Well I guess the fact you're still part of the church is a good thing since I can get you into Kuo Academy much easier. Issei smiled. If I didn't know any better. I'd say you knew something was going to happen. Irina frowned over the phone. I assume you'll be back in Kuo in a few days. Issei said hastily trying to change the subject again. Irina caught onto it yet again, but once again allowed it, yeah I will and so will Zenovia. Irina smiled. This should be fun Issei groaned slightly. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you weren't looking forward to me joining your school. Oh I'm looking forward to it, but my life is about to get extremely tedious. Issei chuckled knowing that Mireyama and Caddis would not take well to Arena joining. For that matter neither would Yumi Karlaman and Rias. Alright, well we'll talk soon Issei. Arena smiled. Yeah Issei replied as he hung up. You have to be the luckiest host I've ever had. Drake chuckled. Yes but luck has a funny way of balancing itself out. We both know that. Issei replied ominously. Issei made his way to school in a good mood due to Arena's impending return, but his good mood was quickly ruined. Why? 
His same mentally cursed sense waiting for him at the entrance of the school was the white dragon empress herself. Valerie had fair skin with short silver hair and ice blue eyes. She was wearing a zipped up leather jacket that barely contained her large breasts and a pair of black pants with a silver chain hanging out of her left pocket. Noticing Issei's arrival she smiled happily. Good morning Issei Valerie smiled walking over to him. What the fuck are you doing here Valerie? Issei groaned in annoyance. This was literally one of the worst people that could come see him. I figured I'd come see you in order to get a thank you for Kakabiel. Valerie smiled cheekily. Why? Are. You. Here Issei repeated angrily trying to hold himself back. Oh don't be like that, I just wanted to tell you that I'll be transferring to Kuo next week. Valerie smiled. Issei froze for a second when he heard her words, can you repeat that? Issei said almost in fear. I'll be transferring to Kuo starting next week. Valerie revealed causing Issei to twitch heavily. Goodbye Valerie. Issei said angrily before continuing to walk. Better me than Lefei. Valerie whispered causing Issei to look at her in pure rage for a moment before finishing his walk. As he made his way towards homeroom his annoyance grew since Ona Citri was waiting for him inside the building. Mind if we have a talk. Sona said calmly though it was more of an order than request. Let's go Issei groaned in annoyance. Like he said, luck had a funny way of balancing out. Sona and Issei sat in her office, the latter with some tea to calm him down, since the conversation to come was a troublesome one. Seeing as how you're clearly familiar with her, care to tell me why the White Dragon Empress has requested to join Kuo. Sona frowned. Her eyes practically popped out of her sockets when the young woman was waiting for her upon her arrival at school, and when she told her who she was and what she wanted Sona almost fainted almost. I can tell you, but I promise that you won't like what I have to say. Issei frowned knowing that the Citrieris's already sour mood was about to get worse. Very well Sona said in a professional tone. She was clearly lacking information, and now was the time to get it. As you are already aware, during my battle with Kakabiel, Valerie appeared out of nowhere interrupting the battle and getting Kakabiel to leave peacefully. That was admittedly very strange. I know she's the White Dragon Empress, but that shouldn't be enough to stop a man of Kakabiel's stature. That's because she works for Kakabiel's boss, the leader of the Fallen Angels Azazel. Issei revealed. What? Sona exclaimed in disbelief. If the White Dragon Empress was working for the Fallen Angels that spelled major trouble for them. Before you get any ideas, Azazel is the definition of a pacifist, so he doesn't want any war like Kakabiel. In fact, the only reason he didn't stop it is because he doesn't want a group like the Devil's Old Mag faction to appear amongst the Fallen. Issei revealed aware of Sona's obvious concern. And how do you know that? Sona questioned. We became friends through online gaming a while back and we officially met a few years ago. I assure you he hasn't influenced me in the slightest outside of my taste in video games. Issei explained. Sona frowned but realized something else, Azazel is the one who ordered Valerie to join Kuo. Yes and no. Issei replied. Explain Sona said bitterly hating this conversation more and more. Valerie has a team of supernatural beings that associate with her in very much the same way a peerage does for devils. Azazel probably went to her and asked one of them to act as his ambassador of sorts, given the current situation. And you're telling me the best option is the White Dragon Empress. Sona frowned. Actually the best option would be a young girl named Lafay Pendragon. However due to the odd relationship she shares with me, Volley became the choice by default. Issei smirked. Can you tell me anything else about this group? Sona asked curiously. I could, but I figure that Valerie could do that for you if she wanted. Issei admitted. If Sona learned that one of the members was Kaneko's sister, it would cause a firestorm that he simply didn't need. I see. Sona frowned. He was clearly hiding something, but since Issei had been so helpful thus far she could ignore it. I'm sure you're worried, but I guarantee that Valerie won't be a major problem. She knows that this is important to Azazel, and that will be enough to calm her down. Issei replied. That and she didn't want to piss him off. Rather humorously Valerie's feelings for him rivaled Rhea's, and he knew she didn't want to get him too angry. Alright. You can go now. Sona frowned knowing that things were going to get very interesting very fast. The revelation that Valerie was joining Kuo had Issei in a bad mood, but that practically vanished when he opened the door to his house later that night. Welcome home master two voices said happily, and Issei's eyes practically bulged out of their sockets. Not only were they back in Kuo, but Arena and Zenovia were each in a naked apron. Zenovia's was a white frill V-cut apron that showed off a bountiful amount of cleavage. Arena's was light pink with a massive heart right at the bottom of her breasts, and like Zenovia's barely went beyond her ass. Wow Issei smiled happily as he walked in and quickly closed the door tossing his bag to the side. I thought I would be a fun way to welcome you back. Irina smiled. As far as welcome backs go this one is definitely up there. I'm just shocked you're back so soon. I thought I would have at least a day or two to prepare. Issei admitted. It's thanks to my dad. He set us up with a flight and everything. 
Get this, he bought the house next door, which means that we're neighbors. Irina smiled. Issei couldn't be happier with the news. Sounds good to me. Then again, I imagine you'll spend most of your time here. Issei said happily. Yeah, I will. If you have company I leave, but otherwise you're all mine, Irina smiled. She knew he'd have other lovers, but she was number one, and she'd keep reminding them of that. Issei smiled happily before walking over to his childhood friend and wrapped his arms around her waist, pulling her close to him, welcome back Irina. Issei smiled happily. Irina smiled back as she wrapped her arms around Issei, I'm back Issei, and I won't be going anywhere. Irina said happily as the two enjoyed the moment for a little bit. Issei dear don't forget to give Zenobia a hug too. His mother teased having poked her head out from the kitchen. As the one who set up the apron she was glad that it worked out for all parties. Issei smiled as he reluctantly pushed Irina away and opened his arms to the blunette. Come here Zenovia Issei smiled. Okay Zenovia replied, and soon Issei was holding her just like he had his childhood friend. For Irina who always treasured a relationship with Issei moving back was an obvious choice. For Zenovia it was a bit different since she seemingly lost everything and now she was forced to start over. The warmth that was radiating off of Issei's body made her realize that this was just another chapter in her life and one that she knew would make her better in the long run. While Issei was enjoying his reunion with the church duo, his supposed rival was meeting with her team, Valerie are you sure that joining Kuo is a good idea young man questioned. He appeared to be in his mid-twenties with short blonde hair, with a small strand on the side blue eyes and spectacles, while wearing a black business suit with a sword on his hip. This was Arthur Pendergon. Arthur we've been over this. You and Biku are too old, Kuroka would be a nightmare, and Issei and Lafay can't be in the same room for more than a minute without trying to kill each other. Valerie deadpanned. It's not my fault. He triggers something inside of me that just makes me go crazy. Lafay pouted. Lafay Pendergon is Arthur's younger sister. Like Arthur she has blonde hair, but hers is shoulder length and blue eyes. Her current outfit consisted of a grey blazer that barely held back a sizable chest with blue plaid accents over a white dress shirt with a black tie, a black skirt, and black shoes. The final part of her outfit was a blue witch's hat and blue cape. Well nothing you can do about it for now nay. At least Valerie can watch over my little Sheeran. A third female voice purred. This voice belonged to Kuroka the other female in Valerie's little group. Kuroka was a catwoman with a voluptuous figure, long black hair with split bangs, and hazel gold eyes with cat-like pupils, and her cat ears and long black tail out for all to see. Her outfit was a black kimono with red interior that was open to show off her massive breasts, a yellow obi, and gold beads, along with an ornate headband. Kuroka was also the older sister of Rhea's servant and a stray devil, due to an incident that forced Kuroka to abandon the young woman. That makes more sense for Valerie to do it anyway. You're way too shy for school of Faye. The final member of the group smiled. This was Biku, and he is a descendant of Son Goku the Monkey King. Biku was a young man with tan skin and short black hair, dressed in ancient Chinese armor with a large staff at his side. It doesn't matter now. I'll be going and you guys will have to just behave while I'm gone. By the way I would have watched over Kuroka even without you asking me. Valerie groaned. Good. I feel horrible for what happened and I hope in due time she'll forgive me. Kuroka pouted. We'll see Vali frowned. As somebody who was betrayed by a family member, Vali knew what Kaneko was going through, but she didn't have the heart to tell Kuroka as much. In due time she would definitely reveal the truth, but for now she just had to bide her time. Issei Irina and Zenovia were huddled together in Issei's bed each naked and everyone sweating from yet another threesome. Man it's good to have you girls back. Issei smiled happily with each girl snuggling into his body, Irina on his left side and Zenovia on his right. Thanks Issei but you're just saying that. Irina pouted. And what makes you think that? Issei replied with a hint of annoyance. You're sleeping with an entire kendo club, not to mention those two devils Yumi and Carloman. You don't need me. Irina pouted. You're right Irina. I've slept with those girl far more than I have you, but I'm about to give you something special. Something that none of them have. And what's that Irina wondered. I'm going to make you like me. Issei smiled before focusing his magic on his teeth and biting Irina in the neck. What was Arina screamed in ecstasy as she received a mini orgasm from Issei's power flowing through her body, before the hickey changed into a small red dragon mark on her neck. I can't give you my sacred gear, but with this mark I can make you a demi dragon. You'll get stronger and you'll eventually gain some dragonic traits. By the way, you should be able to hide the mark with practice, since that's in a pretty public area, Issei smiled. I see Arena said in a daze due to the power now flowing through her body. And I have one also, Zenovia wondered nervously. A part of her wanted to become a devil as the start of her new life, but she was comfortable enough with Issei that she wouldn't mind bearing his mark instead. Of course Issei smiled before biting Zenovia's neck as well. This is the start of a beautiful friendship, Irina smiled as she snuggled into Issei's side. Yeah it is Zenovia replied before following suit. 
A lot had happened to both girls, but they knew that with Issei at their side, things would work out just fine. A smiling Issei sat in homeroom as he prepared for what was sure to be an absolutely insane day. Irina and Zenovia were starting their first day at Kuo today, and he was very much looking forward to spending as much time with them as possible. Good morning Issei Murayama said happily walking over to him and planting a kiss on his lips. Hey there Issei cat has followed suit before sitting down. Typically this was the part of the day when his former comrades would start complaining, but as of yet nothing. Issei tried to take a quick nap before class started, but he wasn't that lucky. The next girls to walk into the classroom were Yumi Karlaman and Asia which confused Issei greatly since they weren't in his homeroom. Good morning Issei. Yumi said happily before walking over to him and kissing him just as Kadis and Murayama had before taking a seat wait, she was sitting in Mitsuda's desk. Things are about to get fun. Karlaman smiled before kissing him as well and sitting down at Mudahama's desk. Asia didn't say anything to him but sat in Kiryu's desk. Something is very wrong with this picture. Issei thought to himself. His thought process was interrupted by his homeroom teacher walking in. Class we have two new transfer students joining us today. The teacher announced and Irina and Zenovia walked into cheers from most of the class, outside of Issei's other lovers who just clapped respectfully. As Irina and Zenovia introduced themselves Issei couldn't help but wonder what was going on. I don't get it. Yumi Karlaman and Asia were always in different classes. How in the world are they now my classmates and nobody is complaining? Issei thought to himself. It's possible that the devils did it. Manipulating minds is a simple task for them. Drag replied. Yeah, but why would they do it? Issei wondered. He was brought from his musings when he felt a weight on his lap. Looking up, it was Irina Shidu with a mischievous smile on her face. Good morning Issei. It's been a while Irina smiled as she straddled him just as Murayama and Kadis had done a few times. Welcome to Kuo Arena. Issei replied knowing where this was going, and before long they were making out on his chair, much to the annoyance of Murayama, Kadis and Yumi, and the amusement of Karlaman. The kiss lasted about a minute before Irina pulled away and sat down in her new seat, one right next to Issei. I guess it's my turn now Zenovia smiled, and she had her own makeout session on Issei's lap. As much fun as Issei was having he knew damn well that he'd have to answer for it soon enough. After Zenovia had her fill and sat down in her seat which was next to Yumi's. Issei was waiting for the reprimand to come from his teacher, but none came. Yeah this was a strange morning. A tasty one but strange. Lunchtime arrived and most of the class gravitated towards Zenovia and Irina, no doubt curious about their connection to Issei, allowing him to slip away. Clearly somebody had changed the memories of the students in order for Yumi Asia and Karlaman to join his class, and he had a fairly good idea of who it was. Partner, don't forget that Valerie transferred in as well. Dreg reminded him. It's fine Dreg. Valerie won't do anything. Issei smiled as he walked into classroom 3 of the home of Rhea's Gremory and Sona Citri, along with Valerie Lucifer. When he walked inside, Rhea's and Sona's eyes widened and Valerie lit up with a smile. Issei couldn't help but notice that Valerie was actually wearing the female uniform, and she pulled it off quite well. Issei, you actually came to see me. Valerie said in shock as she got up to hug Issei. Sorry Valerie, but I'm actually here for Sona. Issei smiled to her shock and the shock of all three girls. Isona said in disbelief since they rarely spoke otherwise. Yes. I need to discuss something with you. Issei replied. I see Sona replied before pushing up her glasses and getting up from her seat. What's going on Rhea's question since as far as she knew, Issei never spoke to Sona. Personal business owner replied as she and Issei left the room to the shock of not only Rhea's and Valerie, but the rest of the class. The relationship between the two was infamous, and if he was seeking her out for something, it was a big deal. The pair made their way to the roof of Kuo Academy, with no word said between them. Luckily for them, nobody was on the rooftop, so Sona easily made the privacy barrier that was required for the talks to come before standing in front of the rooftop door. I take it you were the one who went about rearranging the classrooms. Issei smiled getting down to business. Yes I did. As you well know everything is about to change, and frankly we need you as an ally. Sona said frankly her stern expression not breaking. Issei couldn't help but chuckle at the response, it seems you know me far better than Rias does. Rias would have assumed that my relationship with Yumi and Karlaman was enough. Sona didn't flinch, but decided to fight back in her own way, Issei, do you know what last name Valerie used when she joined Kuo? Sona inquired wondering how much he knew about the young woman. No I don't Issei replied with a smile. Her name was listed as Valerie Amano. A name you should know very well since it's the same last name as the fallen that tried to date you. Sona revealed. Cheeky girl. Issei chuckled mentally since Valerie did that as a way to tease him, but also the devils. Sona would see that and be forced to talk to Issei in order to find out why. In order to force that conversation, Sona had to give Issei a reason to see her hence the transfer of students to answer the question you no doubt want to ask. Valerie is not your enemy. 
She's a bit cheeky, but that's about it Issei smirked. Sona hated the lack of a response, but realized that Issei wasn't going to give in that easily. Figuring that this was another opportunity she posed another question, I heard that you used your favor to get Ajuka to tell you about the evil pieces. Is it safe to assume that you plan to steal Yumi and Karlaman from Rias? Not at all. If anything, what I did was to prevent Rias from using Arena and Zenovia in very much the same way you're using Yumi, Karlaman, and to a lesser extent the Kendo Club. Issei replied with a calm expression. Sona's own calm faded when she realized that Issei was aware of the fact she approved him becoming manager of the Kendo Club in order to secure his allegiance to their side. She was well aware of what went on in the club room, but keeping Issei pleased was a priority with the displays of power he showed already. I see and since Arena and Zenovia are secured what's next for you? Sona wondered. Well, I'm going to go back to class and enjoying the rest of my day before taking care of my duties as Kendo Club manager. Once that's done, I'm going to return home to my lovely childhood friend and her partner and relax in my otherwise simple house. What happens to you and Rias doesn't matter to me, but for now I'm at peace. Issei smiled. For now Sona said with a raised eyebrow. See you President Issei replied happily before walking past her and back to his classroom. He didn't want to tell Sona all that he knew and he knew plenty even compared to the Citrieris. It's amazing what having the right friends can and will do. The smiling Issei Haidu watched over his girls at the kendo club as another day of class came to an end. Next to him was Yumi Kiba who had an odd expression on her face. When we were getting changed for gym today, I noticed that Arena has a dragon tattoo right above her heart. Yumi whispered to Issei. Though Issei said with a smile. In other words, Irina had chosen not only to display the mark he gave her, but to put it in a more intimate area. He certainly didn't expect that. Yes and I have a feeling you're behind it. Yumi said suspiciously. She knew damn well that Issei did it, but she was curious how he'd react to being called out. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Issei smiled cheekily. Yumi pouted at the response before staying focused on the question at hand, well if you were behind it, I'd ask why I can't get a mark of my own. They certainly had sex enough that she deserved some kid of mark. And if I were behind it I'd say that because of your connection to Rias, you cannot hold a mark like hers. Issei replied once again. Yumi frowned at the response, what am I to you Issei Yumi questioned. You are somebody whose body I've explored so much that I know it almost as well as you do. Issei answered bluntly. Yumi blushed heavily at the response, but since it wasn't a clear one she needed more, so if you had to choose between me and Arena, who would you choose? Yumi asked almost afraid of the answer. Arena, but I won't have to choose unless you make me Yumi. Arena is aware of my relationships and she has approved of them. I won't stop you from leaving my side if you're not comfortable with it, Issei replied frankly. Yumi was stunned at the response and was about to reply when Murayama spoke up from the middle of the arena. Okay girls it's time for a 10 minute break, I'll be right back since I have something to discuss with our manager. Murayama cheered as the girls pouted aware of what was going to happen. Seems we'll have to continue this another time Issei smiled as Murayama walked over and escorted Issei back to the lockers for some private fun and leaving the Gremory night with a lot of thinking to do. Issei cuddled in bed with a smiling Arena as the pair enjoyed some post-coital cuddling, hey Issei mind if I ask you something? Arena wondered. Go ahead Arena Issei replied. What's the deal with that girl Valerie? She was pretty angry when she discovered that you weren't a member of the orc. Arena wondered. While Issei kept his kendo club job, Irina Zenovia and Valerie joined the orc and had been going since their introduction to the school. Issei groaned since he didn't particularly want to talk about Valerie. She had her secrets and Issei was perfectly happy to keep them. He could give Irina a hint though. Valerie is interested in me romantically. She probably hoped that by joining the orc, she could spend more time with me and break the wall that I've put up between us. I see and you don't sleep with her why? Irina wondered. She and Zenovia couldn't handle him alone. She actually was grateful to the others for sating his hunger because that's what allowed their almost daily sexcapades. Plus Valerie was a beauty that surpassed the girl she assumed were already lovers, so it was a shocking situation. Issei had to think about it for a bit and he was honestly not sure why, Valerie was smoking hot and under normal circumstances, he would have definitely gone after her. However for some reason there was a mental block when it came to her. Just like how he wants to fight Lafay every time they meet. He can't bring himself to fuck Valerie. I honestly can't tell you. Just like the dragon in me hungers for swordswoman like you Karlaman and Yumi, the dragon in me doesn't seem to want to sleep with Valerie. Issei replied. Okay Arena smiled as the pair snuggled into each other once again. Issei may have the other girls, but she knew that the number one spot was reserved for her. The next day was relatively tame for Issei. Well if you count Issei having to tell Murayama and Caddis that they were on their own today, because Issei had to go to visit the orc and them responding by pulling him away, causing the trio to miss not only homeroom, but first period. 
The glow of the girls when they returned to class was impressive to say the least, and everyone knew what he was up to. Right now Issei was walking to the clubhouse with Irina draped on his left side and a pouting Yumi on his right. Zenobia and Carloman simply watched from the back with Asia. The group dislodged from one another when they opened the door, and before Yumi could announce them Valerie leaped into Issei's arms. You finally came by. Valerie said happily. It's only been four days Valerie. I do have my duties as the kendo club manager after all. Issei reminded her. Oh please, we both know your only actual duties consist of having sex with the girls. If you wanted to have sex you could do it here. Valerie said bluntly pulling away from Issei. Really Valerie, you promised you'd behave. Rhea scolded with a blush on her face. This is her behaving Issei replied with a chuckle. Well be that as it may, I do need to discuss some business with you Issei. Rhea said calmly. Of course Issei replied before moving on to an empty couch opposite of Kaneko with Zenobia and Arena, quickly occupying the space next to him. Much to his further amusement Valerie sat next to Kaneko who almost instinctively laid her head on Valerie's lap, who began stroking her head gently. I'm guessing Kuroka taught her a few tricks. Issei smiled looking at the group. So what's up? Issei smiled. I'm afraid our moment of peace won't last for long. Rias explained with a frown. Really Issei said with mild surprise. That's right. Valerie told us that the leaders of the three factions are preparing to hold an alliance meeting in the next month. And that's a problem why? Issei questioned with a raised eyebrow. It's not a problem, but though I do wonder why now. Sure Kakabiel revealed something dangerous, but that shouldn't be enough. Rias replied causing both Issei and Valerie to frown. The Kabyle's words are troublesome, but that's got nothing to do with why they're holding a meeting. Valerie explained. Arya said in confusion. As somebody who knows him well, I can tell you that Kakabiel isn't the planning type or is he the type who works well with others. Valerie said calmly. That's odd considering that he was able to work out an intricate plan to sneak into three churches and steal the fragments of Excalibur in such a way that the church couldn't protect the other pieces. Arena interjected. In other words, Kakabiel was using somebody else's playbook and clearly not Valper's because he's a small fish. Somebody who has the intelligence required in order to prepare such an assault and the connections to make their plan work Issei continued. Rhea's eyes widened when she realized what was being suggested, somebody brought them together. That's right. You'll learn more at the meeting, but there have been rumors of a new crop of supernatural baddies. Azazel suspects that Kakabiel was working with her for that group. Valerie explained. I see. I guess all we can do is go about our duties until somebody attacks Rias replied with a look of clear concern. Things were about to get even more complicated, and the worst part was that she still didn't have a full peerage. Yep that's all you can do for now. Valerie replied still stroking Kaneko's head. If that's all I guess I can just watch you guys train. Issei smiled. Sounds good Rias replied, and everyone began training. The pairs were quickly decided with Yumi and Karloman facing off with one another, while Kaneko fraud against Akeno. Though in the case of Ikeno and Kaneko it was the former firing spells at the latter, light powered obviously to test her endurance. Rias simply watched. While Lise watched them train Valerie snuck next to him with a smile on her face, so what do you think of Rias Valerie said quietly. I think she has potential, but without more peerage members she's screwed. Issei smiled. I don't mean her peerage Issei, I mean her. Valerie deadpanned. Issei smiled well aware of the unasked question, I don't know why you're jealous Valerie. I'm not sleeping with you or her anytime soon. Yet you helped her deal with her fiancé and helped against Kakabiel. Valerie reminded him. I was hired to do so in both situations. Otherwise I've done a good job of staying out of the devil business. Issei shrugged. You won't be able to do that for very long. I'm aware Valerie. Issei retorted. As the two dragon emperors spoke, it was clear to the watching arena that something was up between the two of them. Valerie was the white dragon emperor, but instead of being rivals the two were civil. What are you hiding Issei hide you know what are you hiding Valerie Amano? Irina thought to herself. Maybe it was time to have another conversation with Issei about his supposed rival. Once again the night came to an end, and once again Irina found herself in Issei's room ready to end the day. However this time the plan was much different, hey Issei I wanted to ask you about something. Irina said calmly as she snuggled into her childhood friend's arms. But that Issei smiled having a fairly good idea of what was bothering her. I know she's the White Dragon Emperor and that she serves the leader of the Fallen Angels, but how does Valerie know you as well as she seems to Arena replied. It was a harmless question so Issei didn't mind asking, after you left, I focused on getting stronger as I prepared for our reunion whenever it may be. However, because I no longer had you, I was pretty much alone. My focus turned to online gaming and it was through online games that I met Azazel. Seriously Arena sweat dropped since that was a bit ridiculous. Yeah. He was one of the first people I ever spoke with in the games, and we became good friends because of it. 
Normally that would be dangerous to bond with a stranger online, but with my powers as they were my mother trusted me to handle myself. What does that have to do with Valerie? Irina pouted. I'm getting to that Issei smiled before kissing Irina on the cheek. During the summer of my second year we finally ran into one another at a video game event and we shared a good laugh at the fact the Red Dragon Emperor and the leader of the Fallen Angels had bonded over video games. Valerie was with him that day and Azazel convinced her to play a few games with us. The video games help Valerie curb her aggression and I always make for a fun opponent. Her actual feelings grew from there, though as I said there are things preventing us from actually acting on it, Issei chuckled. You never cease to amaze me Issei. You turned the girl who should have been a rival into a potential lover because of video games Serena smiled. It was a ridiculous story and one that wouldn't make sense if most people had said so. Luckily for her, Issei wasn't most people. Not likely. Even if the mental block wasn't there, we still couldn't be together, Issei smiled bitterly. Why's that Irina wondered? Because like me Valerie has a unique treasure and one she protects above all things. In her case it's a group of people that have become like a family to her. One of the members of said family absolutely hates me to the point that we cannot be in the same room without fighting. Issei shrugged. Really and who's that? Irina wondered. The Faye Pendragon Issei revealed much to Irina's amusement. Irina couldn't help the large smile that formed on her face, I may have an explanation for that actually. Really Issei said skeptically. I happen to know the Pendergon siblings since I met them during my training. During that time I gained enough of their respect to be allowed into their family library and I read a very interesting story while I was there. That so, yes and it reveals that Morgan Le Fay wasn't the only student that Merlin had under him. He had a second student named Meliodas, who was every bit as infamous as she was at least during ancient times. Meliodas. Dodd it can't be Drag gasped speaking up. That's right Drag. I've seen a picture of Meliodas and I noticed he was a wielder of the boosted gear like I say. So I'm connected to Le Fay from a previous host. That's right. Meliodas was a lover of witches and hoarded them in a similar vein to how you hoard swordswomen nowadays. Ironically enough, he could never quite gain Morgan due to their status as co-apprentices and her feelings for Arthur. So what happened between them that explains our little situation? Issei wondered. According to the story, she convinced Arthur that Meliodas was the one behind the attack on Camelot that cost Arthur almost all of his Knights of the Round Table. Meliodas was executed for that, but just before he died, he cast an unbreakable curse on Arthur. To thy descendants that seek the path of magic, you will fall victim to the Red Dragon's wrath. Basically it was a giant screw you to Arthur and Morgan Le Fay who by that time were a budding couple. In other words if any of their descendants became witches like Morgan Le Fay, they would have a natural animosity towards one who holds the Red Dragon's power. Issei explained. That's right and it's why you and Le Fay hate each other so much. Irina smiled. I'm surprised Le Fay doesn't know about that story. Issei admitted. Morgan mentions it in her dairy, but since she had no clue what the Red Dragon part meant she dismissed it as ramblings of a crazy man on her deathbed. Irina smiled. Issei shrugged since it made sense, well that explains plenty, but how about we get to sleep? Issei smiled, and after a nod from Irina the two just went to sleep. The long week had come to an end, and Issei was looking forward to a peaceful Saturday for once. The kendo club didn't have practice, and Irina and Zenovia were going to the mall with Yumi and Carloman, apparently the orc was cleaning up the pool the next day, and they wanted new swimsuits. Issei decided to play some video games to pass the time, but just as he was about to turn on his system, Azazel sent him a message saying that he wanted to meet with him and discuss something along with Valerie's little group. Azazel did promise that Le Fay would not be there which made things a little easier. Issei was dressed in a simple black jacket with red t-shirt and blue pants with red sneakers. I wonder what he has to say this time. Issei smiled. He hadn't heard from the fallen angel since Valerie's arrival, and he definitely wanted to talk to the old man. Whatever it is just be grateful the witch isn't there. Drake smiled. Hey at least we know what's behind it. I gotta admit I never would have guessed a curse was behind it, Issei smiled. The magical world works that way sometimes. Drake chuckled. Yes but we will deal with that later. Issei smiled as he arrived at Azazel's flat a relatively simple place for such a fancy man. Knocking on the door, the fallen angel leader quickly appeared dressed in his yukata. Glad you could make it. Valerie and everyone else are in the study, and Le Fay is doing errands, so you don't have to worry about any drama. I'm pretty sure the one to worry would be you since we're in your house. Issei retorted. Azazel twitched before opening the door fully, just get down there. Azazel frowned. But it Issei said sarcastically before walking into the room. Quickly going past the living room, Issei found the large study and saw the rest of Valerie's little family waiting for him. Biku was leaning against the wall while Arthur was sitting on a chair sipping tea. Valerie was on the couch with Kuroka lying on her lap just as he had seen Kaneko do the other day. 
admittedly the scene was a bit more arousing with the older Nakamata and her outfit, but Issei stayed focused as Valerie looked towards him. Glad you could make it Issei. Valerie smiled as she tapped Kuroka's head so everyone could focus on the conversation. Yeah so what's up, Issei said calmly trying to focus on what Azazel wanted. I wanted to warn you ahead of time that I'll be attending Parents' Day next week at your school. Azazel said with a calm smile. Oh yeah. Issei said nonchalantly. His homeroom teacher mentioned Parents' Day, but Issei never cared for it, so he didn't pay much attention. In addition to me, you'll also likely meet Rhea's brother the Mao Lucifer and potentially the Mao Leviathan who happens to be Sona's older sister. Azazel revealed. Issei was pleasantly surprised with the news that the leaders of two of the factions would be at the school for Parents' Day, I see, and you're sure that's a good idea. Issei said with a raised eyebrow. I'm actually cool with Rhea's brother and he's known I was here for some time. Seraphal is a bit quirky, but she's harmless otherwise. Azazel explained. I see. So why are you warning me, Issei said with a raised eyebrow, they are very interested in you Issei. You and Valerie are major wild cards with things proceeding as they were. Azazel replied never losing his cool. I see Issei scowled since this was irritating. Don't worry too much about it. Serzich's is a straightforward guy, and as long as you aren't a threat you're fine. Azazel smiled. So you want to stick around for some Smash Brothers? It's been a while since we played. Biku chuckled. Issei also played the resident monkey of the group once in a while. I would but there's no telling when the Fae would get back. Despite having discovered why I can't help but fight her, I can't find a solution as of yet. How did you discover the truth? Arthur questioned. As her brother it would behoove him to find out why they couldn't get along. My childhood friend is a young woman named Irina Shidu, I take it you're familiar with her. Issei revealed. Yes I am familiar with Irina. I heard what happened to her and I was very disappointed in the church actually. Arthur said in a calm tone that Issei could tell was sincere. Well according to a story she found in the Pendergon library, the blame lies in a former Red Dragon Emperor named Meliodas. He was blamed by Morgan Le Fay for what happened to Camelot and Arthur executed him, but with his dying breath he cursed Morgan and said that any descendant of the Pendergon family who practiced witchcraft would face the wrath of the Red Dragon. Arthur looked at Issei finding no deception and sighed, that explains a lot more than I care to admit. What do you mean by that Arthur? Valerie wondered. Over the years the Pendergon clan has produced almost entirely men. In fact, Le Fay is the first female born to the family in close to 200 years. My guess is that Morgan cast a spell on herself knowing that any female would be led to the life of witchcraft like she was while males were going to lead to a life of the blade. She no doubt wanted to protect her family from the curse, no matter how odd it may have seemed. Arthur explained. Well that's one mystery solved, but we can worry about how to crack it later. Biku smiled. Yep, but I should be getting back actually. The curse may be broken someday, but that day is not today. Issei smiled as he left the house, knowing that Irina and Zenobia would be waiting for him when he got home. His life was hardly normal, but it was peaceful, and Issei wanted to enjoy it for as long as possible. End of the here. So that's it for today's video guys, before you go just like the video and share it with your friends. Bye.